So a while back I did a video on Jonathan Haidt's presentation on the distinction between Truth University and Social Justice University. In that video he talks about the ever-increasing left-leaning bias of universities with respect to their political views of their professors, especially in the humanities and social sciences. Here's the data. So this is a representative sample data of American professors all over the country. And as late as, as, late as the uh, mid-1990s, this is people on the left, uh, left or far left. This is right or far right. These are moderates. As late as the 1990s, the left-right ratio in the academy was only two to one. Just two to one, left to right. But after about 15 years, this is the transformative period, mid-90s to about 2010. We have a radical change in the American professoriate. As, the, baby, as the, uh, the greatest generation and silent generation, they retire, replaced by baby boomers and Gen X. Almost everybody is on the left. Because even this five to one, this is everybody. This includes the, the professors in the dental school and the engineering school and the agriculture school. If you focus just on the humanities and social sciences, it's well, it varies. We, a new study just came out between 17 to 1 and 60 to 1. Depends on the department. So here's my department. Here's psychology. Um, I published a paper on this problem with some of my colleagues. We found every bit of data we could on the politics of American psychology professors. So in 1960, it was 4 to 1 voting Kennedy over Nixon. And then they were asked to recall who did they vote for previously. So about 2 to 1. So in 1960, professors were mostly Democrats. Not surprising. As late as 1996. It was the same, about four to one. But look at what happens by every measure afterwards, whether you look at where you are left, right, or who you voted for, it shoots up. And the data just came out last week, a new paper um, uh, by uh, Langbert, uh, um, Mitchell Langbert, is 17 to one for, for uh, this year. Um, so So not content just to lecture about it, Jonathan Hyde has set up a website called Heterodox Academy. So what is Heterodox Academy? According to the website, we are a politically diverse group of social scientists, natural scientists, humanists, and other scholars who want to improve our academic disciplines and universities. We share a concern about a growing problem, the loss or lack of viewpoint diversity. When nearly everyone in a field shares the same political orientation, Certain ideas become orthodoxy, dissent is discouraged, and errors can go unchallenged. To reverse this process, we have come together to advocate for a more intellectually diverse and heterodox academy. And what does heterodox mean? The word heterodox comes from not conforming with accepted or orthodox standards of beliefs. We chose that word to contrast with orthodoxy, which refers to conforming with accepted norms and beliefs. Orthodoxy has religious connotations, but it can be applied to any view that becomes dogma or dogmatic, such as orthodox Marxism, social constructionist orthodoxy, or free market orthodoxy. Now, what does Heterodox Academy do? Well, they have a blog which is well worth reading, and I suggest you follow them on Twitter. And they provide a bunch of resources. The first, and probably the most interesting, is the Heterodox Guide to Colleges, where they rate the top 150 universities in the United States based on four criteria. The first is whether the university has endorsed the Chicago Principles on Free Expression. Now, you may recall that the University of Chicago warned incoming students not to expect safe spaces and trigger warnings, which was a breath of fresh air considering the trends at other universities in the United States. In brief, the Chicago principles are the university's fundamental commitment is to the principle that debate or deliberation may not be suppressed because the ideas put forth are thought by some or even most members of the university community to be offensive, unwise, immoral or wrong-headed. It is for the individual members of the university community, not for the university as an institution, to make those judgments for themselves and to act on those judgments not by seeking to suppress speech, but by openly and vigorously contesting the ideas that they oppose. Indeed, fostering the ability of members of the university community to engage in such debate and deliberation in an effective and responsible manner is an essential part of the university's educational mission. The second criteria is 
the FIRE rating, that is the Foundation for Individual Rights in Education, and whether the schools foster or infringe upon free speech. The third is the ISI rating, which rates schools on how welcoming they are to conservative or libertarian students. And then the fourth criteria is relevant events since 2014 that either promote or restrict free inquiry and viewpoint diversity. So, for example, no platforming an invited speaker would count as a negative. Now, obviously, this is a work in progress, but it's much more useful and comprehensive than the professor watch list I reported on back in early December. And we were informed that they'll be updating this list in February and making another list of the top 50 liberal arts universities. So I'm not going to go through the list, but I think it's noteworthy that down the bottom of the list are such esteemed learning institutions as Harvard and New York University. And as you can see here, those universities have a number of negative events listed against them. All of these events are linked to an article to back up the story. So as you can see here, New York University is one of a number of institutions that cancelled a Milo Yiannopoulos speech. And Harvard has decided to ban individual members of single-sex off-campus organisations from scholarships and leadership positions of on-campus organisations. How progressive. Also amongst the other resources, there's a reading list, a college care pack, and other informational goodies worth checking out. So that's about it. Just wanted to bring the Heterodox Academy to your attention. Perhaps if you know someone considering one of the top universities in the US, you could send them over there so they can take a look. And as always, don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe, and if you feel extra generous, consider supporting me on Patreon, like these wonderful people. See you next time.